Hey folks, welcome back to another video and I want to show you something I did in recent times in Bitwig Studio and I had a lot of fun with it, so I want to share it with you, of course. Um, so let's imagine you want to do some kind of baseline here and we use here um, uh, the polymer synth, right? And we want to use here the saw wave or we can actually use here different oscillator types. So let's use sawtooth here. And then we want to dial in a bit of sustain, a bit of attack. We want to open up the filter here and we want to make it monophonic on the left side. So zero voices or actually one voice only. So we get the saw wave. Then we use here two, uh, two different oscillators for the left and the right side. And then we want to use here a tool device to make this monophonic. And then we get this beating of these frequencies. Right, and then maybe a glide. So you get these typical drum bass bass lines with this. And what you normally do with this is you put some filters on top because um, these sawtooth oscillators give you a lot of overtones or harmonics. So this is perfect for subtractive synthesis, right? So you usually just use a filter here and cut all these overtones away and maybe move the filter rhythmically so you get an interesting bass line. maybe a notch filter so let's switch here to the XP and use notch so this one cuts out a certain frequency um, so it's not a low pass it's basically just a notch filter you can see here this is the filter position Yeah, I could do this all day. I love these kind of Reese, old school Reese bass lines uh, from drum bass. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like. No, that's not it. Stay with me. Okay, it's, it's not it. <laughs> that's not the video. Um, so you usually have here a lot of filters you can choose from. Let's say Fizz inside here of Polymer. These kind of filters give you kind of an interesting characteristic, some different, um, let's say, um, yeah, peaking frequencies. So let's use here an EQ analyzer, EQ curve analyzer, use the second one and then uh, make this one here a generator and in here we use the filter plus. And let's disable this and use here maybe fizz. Open this up. You can see this is like the filter type here of fizz, right? And you can influence all these peaking frequencies and you can play around with this. Or maybe switch here to rasp. So this one looks like this. So it gives you interesting peaking frequencies and um, yeah, especially a different sound because we amplify different overtones, different harmonics here from the sawtooth. Um, so for most of you, this is probably enough, right? You can choose different filters and then you have fun with it. But for me, um, of course, I want to push or want to push sometimes a bit further. So I'm going for an FX grid and let's open up the FX grid here and also, um, Let's uh, leave here this one open so we can see what we do inside of the grid here. So we can use a blend uh, and the blend just blends together two audio signals, right? In the moment here we have just the dry signal, but then we also want to use a second signal here. And then for this signal, we want to use an outpass filter. And I think I made a video about this that you can combine here a dry signal and then a second signal path with an R-pass on it and you create some kind of low-pass filter. 
uh, something like this. And then you can also uh, use here the new invert module, which just face inverts everything or face flips or polarity flips it. And you can see now we have an high pass filter. Um, so this is kind of fun. Uh, but we can also switch this here to 2P. And now we get a bandpass filter with this, which kind of also sounds nice. We can disable here for a moment this EQ thing. Oh, let's disable it as fist. So it's kind of the same as before. We just we just have a band pass and a, yeah a notch filter with this. So this is band pass. This is notch. Um, but we can also do more of these um, all pass filters here in there, and we can combine it. So let's say we want to uh, make this notch filter a bit stronger. We have to actually clone that whole thing here. Go in there, in there, and this one goes out. So we have to put this in series, right? So now you can see uh, we can already create interesting filter shapes. You can also influ influence here the, the band pass um, steepness with this. We can also do something like, oh, let's actually try this out here and uh, use multiple of these. So it's even steeper, right? It gets steeper and steeper. And then put here maybe a macro on that. And then uh, modulate here all these frequencies. By the same amount, of course. Go for 60, 60, and here also. Okay, let's let's see how this sounds. Disable here the EQ analyzer. So we just created a very very steep bandpass filter with this with this setup here. Um, but it's, that's a bit boring. Um, so we can do something else here. We can say we want to use, let's say a mixer. Oh, that's not a mixer. This one here. So we bring this in and do the same thing. So we get the band pass. Then we increase here maybe to 3P. So now we have a low pass and the notch filter here. And we can change the frequency on this. Uh, we can also increase this here to 4p or 6p and then we get something like this and maybe use another one here go in there and we have to lower here with the amplitude like this and then we can use a different frequency here for this alpass than for this alpass, right? And you can see here now the filter becomes more interesting. We have different notches at different positions. It almost looks like we are mirroring here um, the whole filter. So it's kind of a mirror filter, or we can call it this way. Or maybe change it to P, something like this. We can also disable invert so we get this kind of filter. So what I want to tell you is that is that you can create interesting filter shapes here with the grid and these all pass uh, combinations and then use a macro here and just fake or use it as a cutoff frequency and create kind of your own filter shapes. And this becomes more and more interesting because you can use a lot of different Alpass modules here in different different uh, configurations. You can invert this here and maybe use 2P here or 3P here. Um, then you can say we add here another Alpass at the end. 
we blend this together here. Maybe invert this one here, something like this. And yeah, you get interesting filter shapes that you can then move across the frequency spectrum. Let's, let's, let's use this one here. Um, another idea is instead of just using a cutoff knob here, you can also define some kind of um, morph knob. And then say, I want to change here some of the configurations. Let's put this all the way up to 100% and then pull this down, pull this down. Maybe do something like this here. Move this up. Just, just, a, just some minor modulations here, right? And then we can try this out, how this sounds. Um, so this is the way of creating your own filter types inside of the grid and you can see it's actually not not very complicated all you need to do is combine a dry signal with a bunch of alpas uh, modules inside of the grid maybe use invert here a phase polarity invert the signal and then combine it back together um, you can also maybe use a low pass in front of all of that here so you just influence some upper frequencies and just you know leave the base alone if you want to do that um, you can also do some funny things like panning this to the left or to the right so if you have, if you have some upper frequencies here filtered you can say this is only filtered on the left side and this is only filtered on the right side and you can see here you get some differences in the left and the right channel so you can you know, bring some whiteness to the sound in a very special way um, let's see how this sounds. Yeah, this is sometimes what I do. Um, it's very fun to do. And the idea of for this came actually from people asking and me using like here the powerhouse the wavetable powerhouse serum because in serum we have some a lot of filter types in here right um german low pass i don't know what this is um looks like this um so we have a lot of different filter types here with some different configuration. This is a comp filter here. Um, and yeah, the, these filter types bring actually a lot of harmonics to the sound, um, to this wavetable synthesizer. I would say the wavetable synthesizer itself is actually not that interesting. You have a bunch of um, um, wavetables in here, but what I see most of the time is people just use basic shapes like sine and saw maybe something special here and there, but most of the times you want to stick with the uh, regular wave shapes. And then they use very interesting filter shapes here. Um, maybe I find here the reverb filter. It's probably, yeah, it's the reverb filter. You get a lot of different harmonics with this one. Uh, it's probably feedback based. So yeah, if you put this then on a sound, right, you get... Interesting harmonics out of this, instead of just having a saw. And then of course, using a lot of FX here uh, at the end, this 
distortion, compression, and so on. So yeah, this is where the idea came from. Um, so I'll probably share in the next days some filters here I made inside of the grid with some interesting um, yeah, peaks here and there. Um, sadly, we can't still uh, create interfaces for these filters, so it would be nice to have here, you know, some kind of neat interface here, or maybe visualize how these filters look like in the frequency domain. Um, maybe in the future, but you can do it. You can do it in the grid pretty easily with these Alpas uh, modules here. This is what I want to show you. Uh, it's very neat to experiment with this. Because, like I said, it's just a bunch of modules combined, try signal and this, uh, the wet signal here, and then you get these wild peaking frequencies. Okay, I think that's it for this video. I want to show you this. Um, let me know what you think. Leave a like, please, and also sub subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next video. Bye.